Hare Krishna. We continue reading from Bhagavad Gita as it is. We are on chapter 9, the most confidential knowledge, text 16. Aham Kratur Aham Yajna. Aham Kratur Aham Yajna. Swadha Aham Aham Aushadam. Swadha Aham Aham Aushadam. Mantroham aham eva jyam. Mantroham aham eva jyam. Aham agnir aham putam. Aham agnir aham putam. Translation and purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swamishla Prabhupada. But it is I who am the ritual, I the sacrifice, the offering to the ancestors, the healing herb, the transcendental chant, I am the butter and the fire and the offering. So Krishna is saying that I am the ritual of sacrifice. I am what you are offering to ancestors. I am transcendental chant. I am butter. I am fire. I am offering. So then many people think, oh, Krishna has become all these things. So then Krishna is no more. Oh, but we have to understand that Krishna is omnipotent. We say God is omnipotent. What does it mean? It means God has many, many energies. And he expands himself by his energies. And yet he remains God himself. He still remains a person. The example Prabhupada would give that a man, he makes a factory by his labor. He sets up machines. He has Inspection department, packing department, production department, a lot of machines, a lot of people working. Does it mean the man is no more? It's, full, it's, it's like we are being unintelligent if we say, oh, the man has become the factory, so the, now the man is no more. The, the man used his energy. He set up the factory. He set up the system. But the man is still there. He's in his house. So... The Vedic sacrifice known as Jyotish, Jyotish Toma is also Krishna. And he is also the Mahayagya mentioned in the Smriti. The oblations offered to the Pitralok or the sacrifice performed to please the Pitralok considered as a kind of drug in the form of clarified butter is also Krishna. So Krishna is seeing all these sacrifices which are performed for their ancestors is him. The mantras chanted in this connection are also, are also Krishna. And many other commodities made with milk products for offering in the sacrifices are also Krishna. So then this is what people get confused. Oh, Krishna has become the sacrifice. Krishna has become the butter. Krishna has become the mantra. So Krishna is no more. No, Krishna is still there. That's how he's speaking to Arjuna. You know, he's saying, yes, I'm the butter, I'm the chant, I'm the sacrifice, but he still exists. That's how he's speaking. And that is Krishna himself, the original supreme personality of Godhead. The fire is also Krishna because fire is one of the five material elements and is therefore claimed as the separated energy of Krishna. So the Pancha Mahabhut, this material world, is made up of the five gross elements, earth, water, air, fire, ether. So these are all Krishna's energies. These are all Krishna's material energies. That's how Krishna is saying, fire is also me, because it's his energy. In other words, the Vedic sacrifices recommended in the Karmakand division of the Vedas are in total also Krishna. So all the Karmakandi rituals, Krishna is saying, I am also that. So we have to see here, it, it goes to show that everything has its origin in Krishna. As we were speaking in the Bhagavatam reading, everything originates from Krishna. Everything comes from Krishna. So there is nothing that does not has its origin in Krishna. The Vedas, where do they come from? Krishna has spoken the Vedas. The Vedas, there is a certain 
portion of karma kand. So who has made up this karma kand? It's Krishna. He's the one who spoke about it. So he, everything is coming from him. That's why he's called Sarva Karana Karanam, the cause of all causes. He's called Govindam Adi Purusha, the original personality, Adi Purusha. Or in other words, those who are engaged in rendering devotional service unto Krishna are to be understood to have performed all the sacrifices recommended in the Vedas. So one who is ch chanting the Hare Krishna mantra. The Bhagavatam says that Devahuti, Mother Devahuti, she says to Lord Kapila, after Lord Kapila gives, speaks to her the Lord, uh, Kapila Shiksha, she says that one who is chanting the holy name of the Lord means he has done all the sacrifices, all the Vedic sacrifices. He's gone to places of pilgrimage. You know, we do so much endeavor. We say, I want to go to Chardam Yatra. I want to go bathe here, bathe there. I want to do this ritual. I want to do this puja. I want to do this sacrifice. If one is simply chanting the Hare Krishna mantra, means they're doing all of that and much more. That is the position of chanting the holy name and so that's the reason we are all encouraged to continue chanting the holy name. can try to read the 17 pitaham asya jagato pitaham asya jagato pitaham asya jagato mata dhata pitamaha mata dhata pitamaha Vedyam Pavitram Omkara Vedyam Pavitram Omkara Riksama Yajur Evacha Riksama Yajur Evacha I am the father of this universe, the mother, the support and the grandsire. I'm the object of knowledge, the purifier and the syllable Om. I'm also the Rig, the Sa and the Yajur Vedas. So Krishna also says, Aham Vija Prada Pitaha, I am the seed giving father. Krishna says that in Bhagavad Gita. And in this verse, he's saying he's the father of this universe. He's also the mother. He's the support. He's the grandsire. So does it mean because Krishna is the father of the universe, he does not exist anymore? No, he does. He does. Does it mean he has to be old and wrinkled with a lot of white hair? Because usually we feel that, oh, father means someone old, wrinkled. No, but Krishna is God. Navayovanam. Although he's the oldest, he appears as a fresh youth. This is the inconceivable power of Krishna. He's the support. He's the one who's maintaining everything, everyone. Nityo Nityanam Chetanas Chetananam Eko Bahunam Yovidadatika. Katha Upanishad says that. That Krishna, there's there are so many eternals, so many Jivatmas. Who is maintaining all the Jivatmas? Only Krishna. That's it. No one else. And knowledge. We all want to have knowledge. Who is the object of this knowledge? It's Krishna. Where there's just survey, Aham Eva Vedya. Krishna says in 15th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, by all the Vedas, I am to be known. Knowledge, Ved means knowledge. So why do, have, why do we have this knowledge? What are we supposed to do with the knowledge? What's the conclusion we are supposed to come to with the knowledge? Is to understand Krishna. We have to come to the point of Krishna. Om. Om is the sound representation of Krishna. The Vedas, Krishna is the speaker of the Vedas. The entire cosmic manifestations, moving and non-moving, are manifested by different activities of Krishna's energy. In the material existence, we create different relationships with different living entities who are nothing but Krishna's marginal energy. Under the creation of Prakriti, some of them appear as a father, mother, grandfather, creator, etc. But actually, they are parts and parcels of Krishna. So we have different relationships with different people. We have our father, our mother, our brother, sister, husband, wife, children, boss, 
student, employee, employer, neighbor, all these different living entities, who do they belong to? Everyone belongs to Krishna. Everyone is a part and parcel of Krishna. Each of us is a part and parcel of Krishna. As such, these living entities who appear to be our father, mother, etc. are nothing but Krishna. Yes, yeah, so finally one may say, see, I told you I'm Krishna. See, I told you I'm God. What does this mean? No, it doesn't mean we are God. It means we are part of Krishna. Our mother, father, or we ourselves, we are all tiny parts of Krishna. Achintya Bheda Abheda Tattva. Simultaneous, one and different. We are same with Krishna in quality, but completely different in quantity. Krishna is unlimited. We are tiny. Krishna is Sachidananda. We are Sachidananda. So quality is the same. Quantity, completely different. He is unlimited. We are tiny. In this words, the word dhata means creator. So we may think, oh, I am the creator only. I forgot it. No, we are not the creator of the universe. The sun and the moon do not rise or set based on our desire. We can try it. We can try, but it will just be wishful thinking. They don't listen to us. They're only listening to Krishna. Not only are our father and mother parts and parcels of Krishna, but the creator, grandmother and grandfather, etc. are also Krishna. So our father, our mother, Lord Brahma, our grandmother, our grandfather, everyone is part and parcel of Krishna. There is no living entity that does not belong to Krishna. There is no living entity who is not a part and parcel of Krishna. Actually, any living entity being part and parcel of Krishna is Krishna. So here we may say, oh, great, I'm God. I'm really God because here is mentioned that any living entity being part and parcel of Krishna is Krishna. But we have to understand, yes, we are Krishna, but we have to understand that we are part and parcel of Krishna. We are not unlimited like him. We are not the creator, maintainer, or annihilator. We are being maintained by him. Krishna is maintaining us. This is the part, this is the point we have to understand. Is that okay? Or, or do we think that we are God? We are not God, we are part of God. Yeah, this is the Achintya Bheda Abheda Tattva. One in quality. Yes, Krishna is Satchidananda. We are Satchidananda. But Krishna is unlimited. We are tiny. All the Vedas therefore aim only toward Krishna. Whatever we want to know through the Vedas is but a progressive step towards understanding Krishna. Vedas cha sarvet aham eva vedya. All the Vedas are there for us to understand Krishna. That subject matter which, which helps us purify our constitutional position is especially Krishna. So the, the spiritual knowledge, that's also Krishna. Why? Because it's his energy. It's talking about Krishna. Everything is connected to Krishna. Similarly, the living entity who is inquisitive to understand all Vedic principles is also part and parcel of Krishna and as such is also Krishna. So we can see Krishna is the complete whole. You know, it's a complete whole and everything is within that complete whole. That is Krishna. In all the Vedic mantras, the word Om, called Pranava, is a transcendental sound vibration and is also Krishna. And because in all the hymns of the four Vedas, Sam, Yajur, Rig, and Atharva, the Pranava or Omkar is very prominent, it is understood to be Krishna. So the Omkar, the, the sound Om, is a sound representation of Krishna. And um, we, in the Kalyug, we are recommended to chant uh, the Hare Krishna mantra. Hare Krishna mantra in, also includes the Omkar. 
and we are recommended to chant the Hare Krishna mantra because it uh, it puts us directly in connection to Krishna, in his connection to his internal energy, Srimati Radhana. So we are recommended, that's the Yuga Dharma of this age, to chant the Hare Krishna mantra. So we are recommended to continue to hear and chant and we will understand how we are related to Krishna. What is my position in relationship to Krishna? What is my position in relationship to this material world? How can I be situated in my relationship with Krishna? The more we hear and the more we chant, the more we will be able to understand. Is that okay? Yes. Did anyone have any question or comment? Mm. And we'll stop here for today. Thank you so much for listening and joining in. Bhagavad Gita ki, Jai Shla Prabhupada ki, Jai Gaur Bhakta Vindagi,